Welcome back here to the Mountain Morning Show. I wish we could turn the television into a smell of vision for you because this all <laughs> smells really, really good. I'm joined by John Platt from Midway Mercantile. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And uh, let's talk about what you're going to be making today here on, on the show. Sure. Uh, we're going to make a little raclette fondue okay. that we serve at the restaurant. And um, I hope that you will see how simple it is to do that. Uh, great to have that good cheese. And then, boom, you can make that. Uh, we're also going to be doing uh, halibut. We've got fresh halibut and uh, so we're gonna make a what I'm gonna call an Asian pea shoot pesto okay and it I, as soon as I walked in I was talking to John because as you know I got just got back from Thailand and the smells are very reminiscent of Thailand so when yeah. I said that you were like okay good the, 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 the smell profile is, is on I'm on spot <laughs> yeah there we go so uh, let's talk about Midway Mercantile you guys are pretty new you guys opened up in February yep. uh, let's talk about the whole concept in the restaurant so we um, we were very excited to move to this small town, and um, but this sort of cosmopolitan world that's around it, and to bring a restaurant that was going to be both uh, homey, uh, mountain townish, okay, uh, but also some of that. Uh, Cosmopolitan flair kind of to it. The urban, kind of an urban flair to it as yeah, well. Some yeah, stuff, exactly. some dishes that you would get in a very reminiscent, I, I would say, of like a New York or LA style eatery. Sure. Uh, so that's really, really great. So, uh, where are you guys located exactly? So, right down in Midway, right on Main Street. And that was part of the um, draw for us, I think, was that it was a. Uh, you know, we were not going to be that restaurant that, oh yeah, follow the sign, turn the yeah, corner, yeah. you know, like, go down the little right, back alleyway right street. there on Main Street, <laughs> and we have these big windows that slide open, and uh, so lots of people driving by, you know, they kind of see it right away. That's so excellent. It's good. Awesome. So great atmosphere alongside great food as well. And both of these uh, uh, items are on your menu, you said. Exactly correct. right. Awesome. Yep. So let's get yep. started with this raclette uh, fondue. So what's the first step to, to this? All right. So we're just going to put a little wine in the pan. Okay. Start to get that hot. Just a little white wine? It's just white wine. Okay. Yep. It doesn't need to be your best wine. Okay. Uh, but that gives a little bit of edge to the... Um, to the fondue, to the, to the fondue yep, there. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and then as that gets hot, we're going to put in a slurry of um, cornstarch, wine, and lemon juice. Okay. That uh, the, the key with fondue is that cheese, when you heat it, wants to separate. So if you've got that cornstarch slurry, that will keep the fondue together and you'll have this nice, smooth, smooth. creamy yumminess instead of. Uh, Water, cheese, and cheese and yeah, everything yeah. all separated. Yeah, there. Yeah, the hard part about a fondue, as well, is making sure that it doesn't get clumpy right, and kind right. of stick together too much. So it is like a very—it's a balancing act between right, right. keeping that smooth, kind of flowing texture to it and not getting it extremely clumpy as well. So how long does this need to heat up before you can start mixing in all of those other ingredients? Well, everything depends on your stove. Okay. And uh, this one is trying. It's trying. <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't, oh, there we go. There we go. That's I'm going to turn the right one on. That yeah. one was working really hard back there. <laughs> I'm new here. Oh, no worries. Um, it can be a so it's, it's quick as it just starts to show a little bit of bubbles. Okay, then, then you want to start Then we'll put the slurry in. in there and Excellent. it'll all come together really quickly. Um, so while that's kind of going, maybe we could talk a little bit yeah, about, the, the, um, about the ingredients halibut that also. Into the halibut. Okay. Yep. So the halibut, um, we're going to be doing uh, what I would consider to be that sort of classic sweet, spicy, a little salty, and bring those all together. Absolutely. And what's nice about this is we're gonna put this pesto on top of the halibut, we're gonna wrap it in parchment, and then we're gonna bake it. So it's really and gonna absorb all of those flavors. Yep, and, and, it, and it steams it together okay. there, and it also ensures that you get nice, um, a moist okay. dish, and all of us know about fish that's dry. That's dry. It is yeah. not good. That's so. For sure. We're gonna have uh, here. We'll trade places yeah, a little absolutely. bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's yeah. trade right here. I'll monitor okay. this. Uh, Great. This yeah, starting to come up a little starting bit. Starting to come up. There. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the bubbles starting to form at yeah. the bottom of the pan there. And as John said, you can kind of choose any uh, any cooking white wine there for right. that. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Um, so we've got some lemongrass. We've got some green onions. We've got some uh, little serrano chilies. We've got ginger. We're going to put a little bit of macadamia nuts in it today, and uh, that is looking like it's that ready for us. That looks like it's us. ready to go. Yep. So we're just putting a little slurry here, and we're just going to put a little of that in there. Awesome. So how, that was about a teaspoon to two teaspoons, I'd say. Uh, yeah, that there. sounds about right. Okay. Mix that in. And uh, you can see how it starts to... Wow, yeah, to, it kind of becomes gelatinous. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect word for it, gelatinous. 
And we just cook that for a moment. And then in goes the cheese. In goes the cheese. Oh, look at you go. I like it. All right. Perfect. Make Good. sure that all You stir in that a little bit. Okay. I'm going to chop up these things a little bit. We also have some nice pea shoots here that okay. are from Strong Vertical Garden. Okay. Right down in Charleston by us, which is very fun. Excellent. So, so do you guys, is that a priority that you guys have is kind of sourcing local foods as well? Or is that? Yeah, it's, uh, and what's really fun is that, uh, you know, we, we opened in February where not too much was growing in this part of the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, lo and behold, we met a guy who lives six blocks from the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, he moved here, moved back home in March, okay. and has started a farm that he is farming by himself. And this beautiful uh, rainbow chard is from his rustling aspen wow. farm. Okay. So we're doing this serious farm to table. He's six blocks away, is uh, where he is. So wow. Uh, so that is serious farm to table. Pretty serious. Pretty yeah. much go walk out to the back <laughs> exactly. and go get your salad from the back. And uh, turns out that Midway was big. Um, uh, sheep farming okay. territory yeah, also. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have uh, uh, some great lamb from down in Spanish Fork. Excellent. Uh, the Olson lamb. And look at that. It's starting to it looks, melt. It it's looks starting really to come great. together. It's you got to be patient there. and, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't fear. It's going to get there. It will get there. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to be putting um, this stuff for the pesto into the food processor. Into a food processor. Yep. Okay. And uh, so we got here, we have the green onion, we've got a little bit of the lemongrass as well as some ginger. Is that what yep, you said? Some ginger, ginger root yep, and exactly. the pepper as well. And I'm going to actually just put a little more in there so we've got enough to work with. All right. And this cheese fondue is looking really great. It's actually starting to kind of smooth out now. All those lumps are going away. And what's nice is that if you put it in a warm container, it will um, it'll stay it'll, it'll stay like that. Okay. And uh, and what I like is watching people having fun with food. <laughs> we don't serve forks with it, so you have to dip the cheese yep. in, and then it kind of starts to stream String out there. Out and, uh, and that's exactly, great. everybody. So thinks. what do you serve with this? So we serve. Um, some bread. Okay. And uh, apple. Okay. And. Um, and yellow peppers. And yellow peppers as yep. well. That's so great. So a little bit of vegetables as well. And that um, looks like that's about ready, wouldn't you say? Yes, that is All perfect. Right. So you can just turn that down. And uh, what's uh, fun is that it turns out that uh, all cultures have to figure out something to do with the bread the next day. Yeah, that's and very in true. In fact, <laughs> That's what fondue is about. It's not about fresh bread. It's about you know Using slightly bread. staler okay. bread and that holds together a little bit when you want to dip okay. it into there. Okay. So, you know, if you're ready to go, you can go. If you want to wait, but you can dip if you're. Let's try it. I'll give it a little taste really quick. Good deal. And it looks really great. And if you can see right there, it's just super stringy, really good. All right. Hopefully, I don't burn my mouth here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's really good. Really apple good. also there. It's and nice the texture is on just right perfect, as you said. And that really comes from the uh, mix that you put in there. Exactly. Which was, again, sorry, re repeat what uh, So um, wine, wine, lemon juice, lemon juice. and uh, the cornstarch. Cornstarch, yeah. okay. And so, yeah, so it just sits, it holds together there, and uh, you've got a nice... Wow, yeah. Uh, well, that's I love cheese, that's want. for sure. Good, awesome. <laughs> Let's take a very quick commercial break right now when we come back. We're going to put all of this through the food processor. We're start, we'll start to uh, get the halibut all together, and we'll take a little try of that as well. This is John Platt here with Midway Mercantile. We'll be right back right here on the Mountain Morning Show. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back here to the Mountain Morning Show. If you're just joining us, thank you so much for tuning in. Lucky for you, we're about to make some really delicious food. I got John Platt here, who is the chef and proprietor over at Midway Mercantile. It's a brand new eatery that opened up just on Main Street in in um, Midway, pardon me. Uh, let's. We just got done with this great fondue, this cheese fondue raclette there. Uh, you just put all of the stuff through the processor. Let's talk about what went into that that's gonna so, go on top of the halibut that we're about great. to prepare right now. So we've got, uh, so uh, we're gonna do ginger. That's a good strong flavor in it. Some uh, serrano chili, so some spice. Both of those are kind of contributing okay. there. There's some lime juice in it. There is lemongrass, uh, green onion. Uh, I like to put some macadamia 
macadamia nuts in there Just or to, the crunch to give it some crunch and also some real body. Okay. Um, macadamia nuts are not cheap. So uh, you could uh, put some cashews in there or something like that. Okay. But um, I think that gives it just a little bit more body. Okay. Um, the battle here, not the battle, but the challenge is to bring some extra enjoyment to this halibut without taking away from, taking that. Away from that beautiful fish that's there. The lime juice is real important in there, just like we're used to lemon with fish. The lime juice in there is gonna help bring up that, uh, put some acid in there. Excellent, and it's, nice. it's a very Southeast Asian inspired flavors here. So all of that just went into the food processor, processor, which we just did during the break. And now we're gonna be able to actually apply that to the fish here. So we're gonna exactly. transport this over here yep. now. Perfect. There's yep. that for you. And so I'm this is a- i chef today, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it was it's very good. And uh, I was going to say something, but you go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I'm sorry. I don't know so what it now was. we're just going to apply this. Uh, it's kind of a pesto, as you said yep. originally, kind of an Asian inspired pesto there, too. The fish, you're going to salt it a little bit first, uh, a little pepper as well. And then that's going to get wrapped up in this parchment paper, which is really to help seal in all the flavor as well as the moistness. You said you don't exactly. want to take away from uh, uh, the, the moistness of this fish and kind of dry it out, which would not exactly. be good at all. And this is actually a menu item over at Midway Mercantile, uh, and you guys serve this on the daily there. So let's talk a little bit more about what else some of the other uh, options you guys have as well. Well, it's fun, you know, um, as I said, it's kind of a range. So people love our shepherd's pie, which is with that local lamb, um, very hearty. We have a stone hearth oven. Okay. So uh, we wanted to do more than just pizza out of there. Okay. So we do in fact do pizza, but, um, and we're proud of that. Proud of that but well, we yeah. also do uh, nice Scottish salmon that gets wow. roasted in yes. that oven. Um, this time of year, we put some uh, a cherry basil relish on it. Um, we've got steaks. Uh, very popular is the fresh pasta we make every night. And um, uh, so popular was um, some swordfish that we were doing with that in a lemon dill cream wow. sauce uh, that that's actually moved onto the menu. So now we have that fresh pasta going along with the fresh with, pasta changing wow. And dish if you've never night. had swordfish, it's a really, really delicious cut of fish. Uh, it's kind of... Uh, it's got an interesting texture, for sure. I like it a lot. It's almost a little bit more firm, like steak, yes. which is really cool. Uh, and you guys actually, you said you make the pasta from scratch, which right. is amazing. So the kind of the concept here was bringing a very, uh, as you said, cosmopolitan style restaurant or eatery to uh, a nice hometown mountain town. Right. And you have the aesthetic of that there, but the, the menu is just really nice. Stuff that you would find at, at an eatery in New York or in LA. So congratulations well, that's on that. kind getting. of you. Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so now we're going to wrap this up and this will go in the oven. You're going to put a little bit of wine on this as yep, well. Yep, so just a little bit of wine okay. in there. You could uh, put that's a little... just going to uh, add a little moisture to that as well. Exactly. Though. Excellent. And then this uh, this is a two-person job. Okay, so let me help so, you here. Uh, well, just when we have to tie it up, it, it becomes that. So uh, I love this. And we're going to... Kind of fold at the top and wrap over. Yep. So what we want to do is try to seal it in. And it's a funny thing about parchment that it seems so porous, you think it would never Seal. hold all this, but it holds it all in there very nicely. Just uh, roll that up. It's got the string. So this is nice for your guests. It's kind of a little this present. Way, we're going to go the long way. Yep, long that way is okay, there we like go. That. All right, we're going to come up, yep. Dude, you're good. You are good. I said right. I was practicing sous chef today. Yeah, I love it, man. I'll be down there at Midway Mercantile here yeah, the next, <laughs> the next right. week. So that's all wrapped up, ready to go, and it's, it's going to go up. into the oven then? Exactly. It's at just going to go into the oven. We I cook it about 425 for um, about 12 minutes. Okay, so high temperature, but kind of a quick quick uh, cook time there. Yep, yep. And you'll end up seeing that it'll end up uh, kind of bubbling in there and okay. stuff, and it'll tell you it's done. That's exactly uh, again, what you want. you're a little bit protected from uh, overcooking it because it's it's steaming in there. Okay. And um, uh, but you know, halibut is not a fish you do generally serve medium rare. So you try to make avoid sure that. Want it to, that yeah, it's cooked all exactly. the way through there. All right, excellent. All right. But like um, you said, you're not you, you don't have to worry about the char that, that may happen uh, on there because you, right. you are protected by the parchment paper. Exactly. And this is some beautiful char that you actually sourced from a farm that's six blocks, you said, from the six restaurant. Six blocks away. Great. So great. So this is rainbow charred, and I am particularly a fan of not just the leaf, the but the well. stalk. I agree. And if you just chop it up real fine, 
you can uh, kind of saute that quickly okay. before you add the leaves and uh, you're going to end up with a, uh, a beautiful side that's also got a little bit of crunch Nice in color it. to it as and well. And the color, Love yeah. the color there. Yeah. Yeah, rainbow chard's always been one of my favorite dishes, actually, and I think people uh, stray away from eating the, the stock or the stem. Exactly, they don't, yeah. They don't realize how good a flavor it is. Exactly. It's really delicious. And I have to say that, um, boy, when you get your product from six blocks away. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, it's just, you know, chard can sometimes be so earthy that it's too much, a little dirty or whatever. And this is that perfect, you know, taste of the earth, uh, but it's not. Uh, over the top. It's over not, the top, exactly. Great. And the nice thing as well of sourcing your food from, from really close to your location as well is you get to establish that relationship with the, the grower, with the farmer there that uh, can really help the food in, in, in a way that, you, you know, you can kind of say, I, I didn't like this that, that way. It could, I would prefer it this way. And they can yeah. grow it for you in that way so that you can get that exact flavor profile that you're looking for. Plus, you know exactly how your food's being grown, how it's being harvested. So that's really great. Uh, and I and love I, that you guys I are I go over and check on him often. Often. Just yeah. because it's really <laughs> fun. I love to go over to his farm. it's and only uh, six blocks away. So exactly. Yeah. Easy. yeah, it's great. So now we're going to saute this. We're going to saute this. Okay. I'm... Uh, the magic of television right now, oh, you guys are about look to see. At that. All right, this is going to go in the oven now. And oh, it wow. got cooked just like just that. Just like that. 12 minutes went by just like that. But it looks amazing. You can see actually how all the moisture is gathered in the bag. It's kind of sitting there at the bottom, which is really, really nice there. Right. So while that kind of gets ready, we're Got going a to. Oil here. Little oil. It's yeah. a little sesame oil, right? This is actually a canola, canola. olive blend. Okay. Excellent. And a little bit of sesame oil in there as okay. well. In our fancy little containers. Perfect. Now we're putting the rainbow chart in. That'll saute for just a few minutes. Yep. That's great. So and should we. Put stocks um, in first there then, and then you'll add yep. the. Okay. Exactly. So I want to just show you how yeah. these open up. And uh, so, yeah, we'll just, just bring one, one of these there. over here. And again, liquid is staying in there, which I love. I've got some scissors somewhere. There they right are. there, there we yeah. go. Cool. Again, magic so, television. So again, it's fun. Uh, what I what I really like about this, I like the presentation at the restaurant because it's a present that we're opening yeah, for them. Yeah, that's great. So you actually and serve it at the table like this. Though. Yeah, exactly. Wow, and awesome. um, uh, my friend Joe, who is uh, uh, one of our sous chefs, uh, that's her favorite thing to do is it's to go open. out and open <laughs> yeah. it up and everything. I'm sure um, everyone's face is probably just uh, waiting for that to be yeah, opened and yeah. they're su super so, happy with uh, it is. Just clip that. And this reveal the beautiful halibut that has exactly. been cooking in there for about 12 minutes at 425, you said, correct? Yep, exactly. Awesome. And in there. And it looks really amazing. Wow. And you can see that all delicious. that moisture in there still ready to go. And uh, so we're going to serve uh, that up there. Make some double use of. Uh, uh, okay, we're going to use this. And plate. John, how long have you been cooking? How long have you been a chef? Well, I've been eating all of my life, so and that, that helps, really right? inspired yeah. <laughs> it. Uh, the, the story goes that when I was about 13, um, a strapping young man, my mom looked at me one day and she said, okay, that's it. I'll cook you three meals a day. The other five you're going to have to do yourself. You're going to have to do on your own. And so that right. was really what got me started cooking. And, uh, Just kind of fell in love with cooking and fell in love with the art of it and all exactly. of that as well. Exactly. And I actually had a life as a school teacher and a school principal um, prior to uh, to going into the food business. And about uh, when I was about 40, I decided it was time to do the thing that I really that loved. You really and, truly uh, love. Wow. That's so great. That's, a, that's yeah. amazing. What an yeah. amazing story, especially at, at, uh, at 40 and after being a teacher and a principal for such a long time to go into the food industry is, is pretty big. So let's take a, a little sample of this halibut right now. All right. We're going to serve this up this, on this beautiful uh, plate here with this great side of chard that has just been freshly sauteed. Really nice there. So this is what it gets served with at the restaurant as well then? Uh, you know, the restaurant is a changing halibut special all That's the time. That's cool. That's excellent. So uh, this is I'll just one version here. of it here. So we're going to And man, all of the moisture really, like you said, just got locked into you that. You don't want to lose it is the thing. Yeah, so, so you don't uh, want to get rid of that. So. Here, let's put that right down. All right, there, so excellent. There's that for you. Make a mess of everything. 
Okay, again, John, where are you guys located exactly on, on Main 99 Street? 99 East Main Street. Okay. Midway and uh, just down the street. And we've been so pleased to get so many wow. people from uh, Park City who uh, come and see us. And uh, just one other note. Uh, so anyway, there's our beautiful wow, fish. Wow, that's fantastic. You Let's do your thing with do that. a little uh, show to the camera here as it looks really, really amazing. Super delicious there. Very, very nice halibut. And this is uh, something you can find on the menu there at Midway Mercantile. I'm going to dig in. I can use my hands. Uh, we don't have any forks here, do we? <laughs> we don't have any forks right now. So we're going to have, uh, Christine's going to grab some for us really quick. Uh, what, do you guys have a website online as well? Where can people yes. keep up to date with everything that's happening over at Midway Mercantile? So um, MidwayMercantile.com. Excellent. The wonders of this uh, day and age, right. we can actually get the right thing. Um, and uh, also, I just wanted to point out that uh, thank you. What I did, this one had the pea shoots. Okay. This one, I decided to do some mango, some pineapple, some avocado, and tomato. Wow. Okay. So and kind so of a way different take on that. There's thing. so many different ways you can go. I kind of started with that pesto, but um, you've got. Uh, wow, that is amazing. Seriously, so good, and the flavors are perfectly balanced like you said i think the the whole aim and goal with with asian cuisine is there's a balance to everything the salty and sweet has has a great balance there so highly encourage you to make your way over to midway mercantile on main street in Thanks, midway man. i appreciate it the food is absolutely delicious john is a great guy as well they source their food from from some local great farms so make your way so you can try this halibut yourself we had the cheese raclette there as well. John, thank you so much for coming on My and pleasure, Diego. cooking thank for you. us. This is all so amazing. I would dig in, but I doubt they want to see that right now. So <laughs> let's right. take a very quick commercial break so I can eat the rest of this delicious halibut right now. We'll continue here on the Mountain Morning Show. Don't go anywhere. Awesome.